Our first guest is Tahira Abdullah, very well known human rights and outspoken human rights activist. Uh, Ms. Abdullah, welcome. Uh, you know, there has been, there has been some intense analysis of this and, and while there are two kinds of reactions which emerge. One is that there is no good Taliban or bad Taliban and the second which also we've seen in Geo News and some other TV channels is that you need to understand the nuances of it. This is a peace deal, it is good for the region, they are not as bad as the Western media or the Indian media is making them out to be. Uh, what is your understanding of the people who've been given a bit of a rein and this peace deal? Okay, thank you very much. It's, uh, it's with a very heavy heart that I join you this evening. We are mourning the loss of Musa Khan Khail, a geo television news reporter who was brutally murdered in Swat yesterday evening. So I'm just coming from a protest uh, demonstration that we held in Islamabad at the press club. And uh, I'd just like to say, I don't want to talk about good Taliban and bad Taliban. I want to talk about expediency, short term versus long term gains and uh, appeasement policies. I'm against appeasement. I'm against ex political expediency. And I'm against looking at the small, very, very immediate term picture versus the long term picture. Right. That's uh, uh, very well stated. Saeed Minhas also joining us is the editor of the Ajkal newspaper. Uh, Mr. Minhas, welcome to the news hour. Uh, this is, Tahira Abdullah says, this is short term thinking. It's expediency. In the long term, this will boomerang on Pakistan and those who allowed the peace deal. Where do you stand? Well, uh, at least you have to start from somewhere. If we don't start the process, how we can expect a long term strategy? Because uh, looking at the past seven, eight years of Musharraf era, we, whatever we had, we have lost it. So uh, ever since this government has come into power, since uh, last February, they are sort of regrouping themselves and trying to uh, make themselves come to the terms of the new realities, whatever has been thrown upon them. So what they are looking now is trying to find out a solution in an area where army is pitched in, where politicians are not ready to take the brunt, Certainly, government has to do something to bring some sort of normalcy to that area. So, the best possible way out is take small steps and then hope that uh, in the due course of time they'll be able to take the long, big, short, uh, big steps as well. No. Okay. Uh, no. You, you, you don't agree, Ms. Abdullah, clearly with that? I do not. If, uh, uh, if someone is going to talk about small steps, I can talk about small steps too. How about jamming an FM radio that operates from a motorcycle? I think the Pakistan army is capable of doing that. Can you elaborate? Mullah Fazlullah, who is the son-in-law of Malvi Sufi Muhammad, operates an illegal FM radio station. He used to do it from a fixed location, and everyone knows what that location is. So it would have been easy to jam it or even take it out. But now, since the, the army is carrying on an operation in the Swat district of Malakan Division in the, in the Pakhtunkhwa NWFP province, which is a provincially administered tribal area as opposed to the federally administered, it's a little complicated. I won't go into the details of it right now. But it is provincially administered. And therefore, either the government or the security operation that is going on should have been able to take out an illegal FM transmitter, which is absolutely primitive technology, and it does not take rocket science through GPRS technology these days to take out an FM radio station, even if it is operating from a motorcycle and it is mobile. So talk, talking about small steps, I think rather than signing away your, your entire nation's 170 million people, uh, people's future through the nizam e adil which, by the way, is the justice system under the Sharia. And I'd like to go back to the Sharia if, if I have a chance later on in, in, the, in the show. I think they should start with small steps. Taliban and the security forces have been facing each other mm. at check posts and military posts, military in, the, in, in inverted commas as far as the Taliban are concerned, and yet they're not able to, to take each other out. That's... What about bombing girls' schools in the middle of the night during curfew? Mike, so who is uh, who is who is uh, breaking this curfew? 
Mr. Minhas, as a journalist, two days after this deal has happened, a journalist has been killed. Musa Khan Khail was murdered brutally, 32 bullet wounds on his body. True. And you still seem to think that uh, this peace deal is going to work. I'm not saying that this deal is going to work or not, but I'm certainly optimistic in the sense that at least uh, you have to start from somewhere. Okay, armies in this region or anywhere are not meant to deal with the insurgencies. This is sort of an insurgency and India itself is dealing with uh, insurgencies in almost 14 different states. Are they going out uh, with a military operation in every state? Yeah. Is it the only solution? Wh whatever you look at the history, all the wars, all the insurgencies, whenever they were controlled, they were controlled while sitting on the table. If you don't sit on the table, how can you expect some resolution of the uh, issue. Mr. Minhas, it is impossible, it is impossible to even conceive that in any situation the Indian government would sign a peace deal with people who are okay with beheadings and for whom burning down girls' schools is a matter of, uh, is, is, you know, you've got to think also about who you are dining with. I mean, you cannot be buying peace with these people. I mean, Indians have not been uh, hijacked by the religious elements the way we have been hijacked. No, no. So uh, we are dealing with a different monster altogether no, no, no. what Indians are dealing with. No, no, Indians no, no, are dealing with separatist question, movements. No, question. We are dealing with religious extremists. No, no, question is and 2, in, in dealing with the religious... There are just 2,000 terrorists. 2,000 terrorists and there's the entire Pakistan army. I mean, do they want to deal with them or not? Is there a willingness to want to deal with them is a big question or are you actually with that's them? Sad. That's that, That's the suspicion. No, no, no. Why don't we look at the other side of the story that all the politicians, all the elected MNAs and MPAs have fled from that area and army is left there on its own to deal with all the insurgents and all these extremists. No matter there are 2,000, some so claims there are 8,000. Yes, army Ms. should have Abdul taken them up. Uh, 8,000 or 10,000 doesn't make a difference. But the problem is when the political leadership is not showing the role, the lead role, then the army has to tackle this issue. They have also That's lost about 2,000 of their own people there no, fighting with these you, insurgents. They're, they're long-term concerns. Yes, Ms. Abdullah. Um, uh, two wrongs have never made it right. Okay? So the government has lost its writ. The army is either incapable or unwilling to take out uh, we hear anything between 700 to 2,000 uh, you know, militants, call them Taliban, call them whatever you will, it's a semantic issue. And therefore we just raise our hands up in surrender, throw down our arms and say, okay, you can run right. Tomorrow it will be uh, southern Punjab, day after tomorrow it will be Balochistan, and it's already Muritke and, and other places in, in Punjab where there are th these extremist elements, religious uh, terrorists raising their heads. And by the way, I'd just like to talk a little bit about their agenda. Their agenda is very clear. It's not nizam e adal which is a justice system. It is Sharia in toto. Mm. And that, it's not just Sharia in, as a, you know, in terms of a system of religious laws being imposed in terms of justice and, you know, curbs on women and non-Muslim Pakistanis. It's, it's also taking over the state. Their, their ultimate agenda is to take over the state. Yes. What the secular, the so-called calling itself the secular government of Pakhtunkhwa and right. WFP, the Awami National Party, which, by the way, is bearing the legacy of the frontier Gandhi, Bacha Khan. Right. You know, he must be turning in his grave today well, at, what, at what his followers are doing right. with their secular. They were elected on the 18th of February 2008 on a secular agenda, and they have done what the religious political parties coalition, the MMA coalition, was unable to achieve in its five years of government from 2002 until 2007 well, is to establish the Sharia, uh, Sharia as the law of, of that province. Well, see, and, and this is not just a problem that concerns Pakistan, but the entire world. But, but Saeed Saab and, 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 and Ms. Abdullah, I'll have to wrap it up there for want of time. Thank you very much for joining us.